Hello everyone, I'm Joe March, a PhD student from the University of Cambridge, and welcome to my talk on the impact of correct and simulated focus cues on perceived realism. When viewing the real world, our eyes receive a number of focus cues. Most noticeably, out-of-focus objects appear blurry. In computer graphics, so-called defocus blur is often exaggerated to create a heightened sense of depth or for artistic effect. This blur exhibits chromatic aberration, resulting in colored fringes around out-of-focus objects. This is an important visual cue for the human visual system in determining if the out-of-focus object is in front of or behind its focal point. Additionally, spherical and higher order aberrations present more subtle focus cues to our eye. Traditional stereoscopic displays present virtual content at a single focal distance. While acceptable for informational content, such as text and user interface elements, this limitation becomes more noticeable when presenting virtual scenes and becomes particularly acute when doing so on near eye displays, such as those used in AR and VR headsets. In these cases, there is a discrepancy between the visual cues reaching the eye. Depth cues, such as scale and stereoscopic disparity, place virtual objects at a range of distances. However, focus cues, such as defocus blur and chromatic aberration, indicate that all content is presented at a single focal distance. This results in a conflict between the point at which the eyes are converged to and the distance from which focus cues are being received. Such a conflict can result in eye fatigue and visual inaccuracies in content presentation. More advanced display technologies, such as multifocal displays, can present virtual content at multiple focal distances, allowing for close to physically correct focus cue presentation. However, such displays are more expensive and very technically challenging to deploy in comparison to monofocal displays. We wanted to establish if such costs in display technology are worth incurring when striving for perceptual realism. Here is an illustration of content presented on a monofocal display. All content is presented at a single focal plane, irrespective of virtual object placement. And here is that same content presented on a, on a multifocal display. Note that the distant object is displayed at a farther distance than the closer object. In this study, we used a high dynamic range, multifocal stereoscopic display with two display planes. This display is capable of presenting highly realistic content, which in previous work has been found to be visually indistinguishable from real world scenes. More details of this display and its capabilities can be found in the paper, Reproducing Reality with a High Dynamic Range Multifocal Stereo Display, presented at SIGGRAPH Asia in 2021, or by following the link in this slide. In our experiment, we asked observers to compare scenes with two different methods of focal cue presentation and to report which appeared the most realistic. Our scenes contained only two objects, one placed at the center of each focal plane. Our objects were placed to have a depth separation of 0.4 diopters. This allowed both objects to be fused by viewers simultaneously, limiting the potential impact diplopia might have had on our results. We used the multifocal capabilities of our display to present each object on its own focal plane in those conditions where we wished to reproduce near physically correct focus cues. In other conditions, both objects were shown on the near focal plane only. In those conditions in which we simulated focus cues, we used eye tracking to determine the gaze position and adjusted the focal depth of our renderer accordingly. The conditions we compared were near correct, stereo, chroma blur, retinal blur, and fake blur. In the near correct condition, multifocal rendering was used to present near physically correct focus cues with some inaccuracies due to our objects being non-planar. In the stereo condition, our content was presented entirely on the near focal plane of our display, with no attempt made to simulate focus cues. The remaining three conditions were also presented entirely on the near focal plane, and attempted to simulate focus cues 
to varying degrees of accuracy, the details of which I will go through now. In the retinal blur condition, out-of-focus content is convolved with a cylindrical kernel, the diameter of which is given in equation one. This should reproduce close to physically accurate defocus blur without attempting to reproduce other focus cues such as chromatic aberration. In this condition, we do not account for focus cues encountered from viewing the, dis from viewing the content on a display, although we expect these to be fairly minimal due to observers being fixated on the display when viewing our content. In the chroma blur condition, much like in the retinal blur condition, out-of-focus content is convolved with a cylindrical kernel whose diameter is computed using equation one from the previous slide. However, this convolution kernel is computed on a per color channel basis. The focal depth is offset according to the wavelength of the light emitted by each channel. And so each channel is convolved with a kernel of slightly different diameter. In this condition, we deconvolve the image to remove any blur and chromatic aberration expected to be encountered when viewing the display. The intention of this condition is not to present a correct image on the display, but rather to present an image that when viewed by the eye will produce the correct retinal image and thus simulate the viewing of physically correct focus cues. More details of this method can be found in the surrounding literature. In the fake blur condition, we simply convolve out of focus content with a Gaussian kernel of twice the diameter of that used in the retinal blur condition. This produces an exaggerated depth of field effect commonly used for artistic purposes in computer graphics. It makes no attempt to be physically accurate and does not account for focus cues encountered from viewing the display. In this video, we have filmed the display showing content similar to that which was used in the experiment. Note the minor geometric differences between the multifocal and stereo conditions. This is due to the camera placement not exactly matching the eye position for which the display is calibrated. For this video, we configured to use the camera to use an F number similar to that of the human eye when viewing this scene. Here are some example renderings of content presented in the experiment. We used life-life objects to ensure that other visual cues, such as relative scale, were easy for observers to interpret. This allowed us to isolate the presentation of focus cues as a factor in determining differences in perceived realism. When running our experiment, initially, we intended to only use gaze contingent rendering of focus cues when studying simulated focus cues. The free viewing session, as we call it, set the focal depth to that of the gaze point. However, we found our early results surprising. Simulated focus cues appeared to be performing worse than the stereo only condition. One obvious explanation could be degradation in realism due to inaccuracies in the gaze tracking, or visual inaccuracies during the transition of focal depth from one object to the other. So we added another session to our experiment, the fixed on near session. In this session, when the near object was in focus, in this session, the near object was always in focus. Observers were instructed to fixate only on this one object when forming their judgment. This instruction, however, raised the prospect of observers cheating and forming their judgment having fixated on the out of focus object. And so we added another session, the fixed on near with blanking session. In this session, observers were instructed to fixate on the near object, and when their gaze deviated from this object, the screen was blanked. These sessions are illustrated in the figure below. Our results were consistent across all three sessions, indicating that the aforementioned inaccuracies did not meaningfully impact our results. We present our results as GMB scores, normalized so that scores for the near correct condition are set to zero. In this case, a condition with a GMB score of one indicates a 75% chance of preference for the near correct condition versus this condition in any given comparison. The results were bootstrapped with 500 samples to generate confidence intervals. I will now discuss the specifics of our findings in more detail. We observed that the near correct condition was generally perceived as appearing more realistic. This implies, at least for small depth separations, that the presence of physically correct focus cues enhances realism. This motivates the use of multifocal displays, in spite of their challenges, when attempting to present 
perceptually realistic content. We also observed that in all cases, simulating focus cues degraded realism relative to both presenting near physically correct focus cues and presenting no focus cues at all. While we can only speculate on the reasons for this, this finding has important implications for the utility of gaze contingent rendering on near eye stereoscopic displays and warrants further study. Finally, we observe that different focus cue simula simulations result in different levels of perceived accuracy. This indicates that observers can perceive and evaluate simulated focus cues at small depth separations. Whether this finding holds for larger depth separations is an interesting question for future research to consider. In summary, we have found that focus cue presentation does impact the perceived realism of virtual scenes when viewed on a stereoscopic display. Near physically correct focus cues are perceived as the most realistic. Attempts to simulate focus cues degrade realism relative to both near physically correct and no focus cue presentation. Finally, different types of focus cue simulation achieve different levels of perceived realism. Thank you for watching.